We're going to be spending the next 16 weeks together talking about it. Sure, you have a really strong internet connection. We're going to be looking at a lot of photographs. You're going to view, uh, of course, some lectures that will have photographs in it, as well as some videos. So it's really important that you're prepared for an online class. This class is through Canvas, and so if you have already had a few classes where your instructors are using Canvas, you're gonna be ahead of the game. Because I really think that's a big part of it, especially with an online class. So let me just say this. We are all working from home, and I understand the many challenges that we are all facing, um, because they, I'm facing them as well. Um, I have a couple dogs that are going to run through and bark from time to time. It's going to be annoying. One of them is very old. His name's Corduroy. He's 15 and a half. And sometimes he howls. So just be prepared. Uh, I know that you all uh, have your family's home. So some of you are parents. Uh, some of you have brothers and sisters. And you guys are all sharing the space. So I understand how things happen. That said, we do have things due on certain dates and the whole idea behind taking a class is that I give you information and you provide me with results or material that I've assigned and demonstrating that you understand. So, what are you gonna need? Obviously your computer, we have an assigned text. You're going to get an email from me with some of this information in it. But uh, there is a required text, and I have a lot of recommendations for different books that are going to help you um, enjoy the class. This class is really specifically about talking about it. So there are a lot of books out there that also do that. Um, they talk about the photographers, they talk about, the photographers talk about themselves, photographers talk about other photographers and their styles, how they have been, uh, who they've influenced, if that photographer was influenced by them. I have um, uh, compositional terms, what makes photographs good, uh, why they're interesting, and why photographs are made too is really important. And then there's a concept that I want you guys to kind of start rolling around in your head that um, I, I've always thought about, like, mm, around 10, 12 years ago, around 2008, when we were all experiencing a huge financial crisis, uh, the arts started to go away in schools. And I really started to think about, what if we, um, what if I said to you, can I have your, your phone? And you actually hand me your phone. Let me go get mine. And we said, and I said to you, um, can you give me your phone? And you do. Crazy, right? And I've had students in class do this. And I say, just, can you open your photos? And, and they do. And maybe take me to a new favorite photo. Pretty cool. I was uh, photographing one of my dogs uh, underwater, swimming, videoing. And I said, okay, so, Let's just stop that and uh, can I just hit delete on all of them? Would that be okay? And you go, no, oh my gosh, what do, you, what do you mean? My point is they're important, right? Here and many of you, many of us have so many photographs on our phones. Um, and hitting delete is essentially deleting memories, experiences. In a way, the fact that we exist, right? So, making photographs is an essential part of our lives, and we really take it for granted. Um, so it's important to understand where they came from, because your appreciation and depth and, of knowledge and, and experience of the medium will change so much. It would only be written or painted or drawn um, impressions, because afterwards it's an impression. It's nothing that is immediate. We have something called a snapshot memory, and when you think back on different places you've been, it's kind of like a flash in your brain, right? It's and not literally like a, a flash of light, but more a flash of an image. And so photographs help us remember. 
They help us commemorate. Um, they help us see things we can't see. Photographs that are made that help us understand things we can't see are like x-rays. They help us see the inside of our body. Things moving incredibly fast and what it looks like, let's say, on impact. A water balloon exploding or a bullet on impact of an apple. There are some classic images that I'll be showing you uh, to illustrate that, but also that these are the classic, iconic images that uh, where technology and art met and uh, were able to give us something incredible. See, and because of technology and photography, it freezes it for us and we can see the nuances of uh, whatever it is we're looking at, like a bullet on impact of a water balloon even, um, and what happens and how incredible. We're going to be talking about the various kinds of technology that uh, you know, are used. This is a contemporary small camera. Uh, it's a mirror called a mirrorless camera. And then this is a medium format camera. Uh, makes a larger negative, and um, and sh and I shoot film. So um, we're going to talk about various different cameras. In a way, we take it for granted because it's around us. It's all around us all the time. Uh, if I were to ask you, and this is, this is a concept I want all of you to have in your mind when, uh, whenever we're exploring a genre or a period that may be not so interesting for you, I think one of the things that keeps me interested in the historical part of it is thinking about why it's important. Why is photography important? What has it done? What is it doing in that moment that it's being made? maybe like photo, that, that photograph was being made. What is it telling us? What does it do for us like a hundred years from that moment? Um, and that helps me kind of stay like in it. So meaning um, if we didn't have it, in my mind and heart remember what my son looked like, but not exactly. Those are all impressions. And if we didn't have photographs during the Civil War or after, these would all be drawings and paintings, which are impressions because they're made after. Like images that help us remember different times and periods. And we're gonna talk about different photographers, the iconic images that make us think about a certain period, like Dorothea Lange's Migrant Mother. Be on Instagram, I'd like it if you were. Uh, who's asking you to be on social media? Uh, me. Instagram's awesome. Uh, you can learn a lot about photographers, different styles of photography, genres, things like that. Um, we use it, I use it, as a way to communicate with you guys kind of quick, right? Uh, and so we have a hashtag and it's PHOT107. And so whenever you use that hashtag on an image, um, it'll come up in my feed. Also, you can always tag me at Lisa Carlstein. That's L I S A K A R L S T E I N. Probably seen it a few times. Um, my name, uh, and I will uh, look at it then also. So we'll all be able to comment and engage. It'll be all five of my classes together, four or five, and so um, you're going to see what the other classes are doing. Um, that may, I may change the tag, uh, the hashtag, so that uh, each class has its own, but everybody hashtags the same thing so that we can. I will be teaching four or five classes this semester. So when you uh, email me, or uh, please, please say in the email um, which class you're in, only because, and that, which class would it be? Not just history of photography, but it has a CRN which is a course record number. Um, your class, like maybe if you were to get online right now and look it up, you may, you'll, you would be able to find it through the class schedule and you would see that I have five classes attached to my name. They're all history of photography. And so it would help me when you're asking a question about the class or something you may have submitted or whatever it is, 
um, to put the course record number on it because that it just helps me get to the information faster. And that is a requirement that I'm putting that I have in the syllabus. So I'm just letting you know. If you were to send me an email today, please make sure you state which class it is that you're in. Now again, I know it's history of photography because that's all I'm teaching, but you will be um, contact me with your AVC email, not your personal email. It's important that you get into that habit because you won't be able to submit assignments if you're using your personal email. You won't be able to access Google Drive where you're going to also submit photographs to a shared folder or your research paper and um, presentation that you'll put together. So it's important to just get in that. If you have any special requirements, uh, like you know you need extra time on tests, you'll have sent me a document from Student Services that lets me know what your needs are. So you'll need to get that. It feels like it's kind of it. So I look forward to our next 16 weeks together. Again, make one last thing. <laughs> and this is bad because, oh, Pronto. We, Pronto is this fabulous app that's attached to Canvas. And um, if you are registered in the class already, and you're getting this email, means you're registered, um, it's an app that you'll open, or you'll have to download it, and uh, it's awesome. We'll be able to communicate through Pronto, um, and it's a green app and it's, it's just messaging. We can send videos and photos and just all kinds of stuff quickly to each other. And then you can talk to other people in the class. You can direct message and then you can also message the whole class. So there's a group discussion and uh, individual discussions. If there are specific things that you would like to discuss with me, um, like maybe you're not understanding a grade or you didn't see something or you have a question about an assignment, direct message me. It's better to do that. We are a few days away from starting at class and so uh, get in, get the help you need. Um, there are tons of resources on campus through student services. I love Dr. Zimmerman. She's amazing, amazing, amazing. There's so many amazing people in student services. Take advantage of what we have. I always like to say if I had these when I was in school, oh my gosh, education would have been so much more fun for me. Um, and so I finally loved being a student when I was in grad school. That's kind of a long time to go, right? But anyway, um, all right, okay. that said, thank you. Welcome to fall 2020. <laughs>